G'day, it's Sav from Fowl Talkers. Welcome to another edition of Talking Fowl 101. Um, today we're going to go through decoy spreads, or one type of decoy spread essentially, I guess. Um, it's all well and good to, to have decoys. I guess the, the main thing that you want to do is use them to funnel the birds to a position. Um, and when you set your decoys correctly, you can sort of almost guarantee that you're going to be taking most of your shots within a range or an area that you that you dictate to the ducks. What I'm going to do here, I've got about oh, four dozen, call it 50 decoys, um, and we're going to simulate a hunting position. So I'm going to be on, on working on the fact that I'm hunting out of this position behind me, out of this, this strand of cane grass, and essentially we're just going to work work through what we call the U shape. Now, with when it comes to decoying ducks, um, ducks always need to land into the wind, generally speaking. So in this spot, we've got the wind coming from our from from onshore, so it's going to be at our backs, um, going out that way. So ducks are going to need to land into the wind, um, and essentially what we do is we we set up a V or a U pattern, which for every decoy spread you want to have like a, a landing zone or a kill zone, um, which is basically a clear area where the ducks are going to try and land, uh, and that's where you're going to take all your shots. So we're usually shooting our ducks at anywhere from 20 to 30 metres um, from our hunting position. So our furthest decoy will often go out a little bit further to 40, um, and our closest may be as, as close as 10 metres or even five, um, depending on, on how well we can hide. So um, the main thing out of all this is that you leave an open zone for the, for the ducks to land in, um, and that you have enough numbers to sort of get the ducks' attention from a long way out. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, as you can see, there's some blackies just about to come over my shoulder. So we're in the right place to be. What we're gonna do, we're gonna sort of set up our first decoy. Now the first decoy is usually the closest decoy to the hunting position. Reason being that it gives you a reference point. So first decoy is closest, and the second decoy is usually the furthest. Uh, and then you, you fill out the distance in between. Now when you're doing a U-shape, you've got two arms essentially, you've got that U-shape. Like I said, first decoy, nice and close. In this case, we've got about 50, so what we want to try and do is sort of bulk up the spread as you get close to the hunting position. You want those birds to get more and more confident as they're approaching you. Um, so we'll bulk up near the hunting position and then sort of trail off on each way. So first decoy goes in. Like I said, it's basically a reference point. We'll basically end up working our way back now to the furthest end. Now, we sort of don't usually shoot beyond about 30 meters, but um, I like to run the decoys out to about 40 for the reason that A, you know when they get past that first decoy that they're actually inside 40 meters, um, and B, you want those ducks to be able to see the decoys. So the main thing about decoys is you're selling the illusion that this place on, on the swamp is where the ducks want to be. Um, so you basically want to have ducks being able to see them. Um, the easiest way to do that is to get them further out. So the further away from you they are, the more chance there is of the ducks seeing them. But it's a fine line because if you have them all too far out, you're going to be taking your shots way too far out uh, and you don't want to do that. So we usually trail off to a, to a little, like a, I guess the spread gets thinner as it gets further out, uh, on the basis that by the time they see those ducks and they start working in, then they see the bulk of the decoys inside the main spread and that's where they want to come and land so um, like I said next decoy is the furthest one all right so we're out basically at our furthest point now so we've got one decoy in close one decoy out at our furthest point which we're going to just put here and now we're going to fill this section up and this is going to become I guess the left hand flank of our U shape we've got to do the same thing on the other side and then we'll have a big, a, a big vacant hole in the middle and that's the landing zone that I mentioned earlier. So as you can see, we just sort of started out at the furthest point. We've got the closest one in and we're just gonna work our way in between. Um, first thing first, we usually just form a line back in and then we fill that spread out. So first thing we do is get the shape that we want. Uh, in this case, it's that U or the V shape. Um, then once we've got that shape, then we bulk it out as we see fit with whatever decoys are left over. Uh, depending on the place that you're hunting, you might need to go a little bit bigger with your decoy spread. So 
you really don't know how hard you can go in, in terms of bulking it up um, until you've set your line up. Once you've done that, then you can go as, go as hard as you want in terms of filling it out. The one thing I just want to touch on, like setting up decoy spreads, I guess you, you want to try and get it done in, you know, as quick as possible um, while still doing a good job. So a couple of things that come in handy, obviously, pre-tied decoy rigs, you can sort of stand in one position and, and do a, a large proportion of the decoy spread at once. Uh, and the other thing that's nice is, I guess, the weighted keel on the decoy. So when you do throw it out, it turns up the right way every time. So that just saves you having to go back, walk around and, and put them all down the right way because they won't turn over the right way. So weighted keel, pre-tied rigs, everything sort of goes a lot quicker and, and you get through it a lot easier and you're hunting before you know it. So we've set up now basically one half of this U shape, which you can see trailing out behind me. Um, I've got about a dozen decoys left in here. I'm just going to use these to, to chock out this front section. I just want to have a lot of, I want the appearance of a lot of decoys right up here. Um, a lot of ducks, for these ducks to be able to see them. So you, you can hopefully see now what we mean by, that's that's one half. Once we get the drone up and, and you see what's going on um, and, and we finish off this other half of the spread, it'll all make sense if it, if it isn't already. But um, yeah, this is, I guess, the foundations of of any good hunt is having a good decoy spread that is really going to get the ducks landing where you want them to land. So when it comes to your, your decoy spread, you're throwing them out, you don't worry too much about the, like where they end up the first time. I guess once you've got your whole spread set, um, I generally don't like having the decoys too close together. So once it's all set and all the decoys are settled in their positions, then you can go and move them around. And it doesn't take much just to, to move one from here to there and sort of open up some space. So they don't look like they're on top of each other. All right, so we've set up the, the first half. Um, now we've come out again to the furthest point on the right-hand flank of this of this U shape. So um, one thing I want to talk about now is, I guess, the width of the landing zone or the the size of the landing zone. Um, we're setting this up like we're going to be hunting two people in that in that hide there. <clears throat> now it's important, I guess, if there's only two people, you've got a a bit more you can play with in terms of ducks coming in and, and people being that both of you being able to get a shot at the birds coming in um, but if you're hunting sometimes and you know we've had four or five of us in a hide um, the more people the bigger the landing zone that needs to be just to give the ducks more room to come in uh, and to present everyone with an equal opportunity to get a shot uh, and that way I guess if the ducks decide to go to one edge then the guys on that side get a shot and if they go on the other edge then the other guys get a shot. It just works that way. So you tailor that, that landing zone um, basically to the number of people that are, that are hunting. Alright so we set up a decoy spread. This is essentially where we'll be hunting from. Um, so we're going to send the drone up and you'll see what the birds actually see. The bird's eye view of, of this position but uh, from where I stand and you know hunting over this spread I'm more than happy with with what it could do. Um, I, I'm quite comfortable with, with the way it looks. It's definitely got the right shape that we're after. Uh, and it's got a nice pronounced landing zone where, where the ducks are gonna be focusing their, their efforts onto. Um, and the wind's at our back, which is, all, I guess, the ideal scenario. You always wanna have the wind at your back wherever possible. Uh, sometimes you can't avoid that, but where you've got a choice, try to get the wind at your back. Um, and it presents, the, the birds have to land into the wind. They present a lot better um, for that for that shot, I guess, and, and their, their vital organs are exposed, you end up with cleaner kills. So this is what it's about, really.